all right i'm an idiot in my last video i said i just looked up how much money it needed to make no it's not making its money back there's no way in hell it's gonna do that and i was a little bit off just by like a billion you know not not that bad just like a billion but like the main mistake i made was doubting james cameron you never doubt james cameron he's insane like the time he almost drowned himself and his actors or the time he broke into the editing room or the time him and his crew were drugged and everyone was on pcp yeah that's a true story so i wanted to go over like the top five most insane things james cameron did yeah we're, we're making watch mojo content now we're down bad number five it was the late 70s james cameron hasn't directed anything he's nowhere where he is right now and there's this movie producer alito asutis i don't know how to say his name i'm sorry but he needed a director fast because the old one left reportedly over disagreements probably because he wanted too much control over the films so Cameron got the job because he's fast and cheap. James tried to make the best movie possible. Like he really was dedicated to this film, his debut film. And he even made the props because like the art department was way behind. They like sucked. I don't know. But the producer kept arguing with Cameron, which led to Cameron basically only being responsible for shooting the film to the point where James Cameron wanted his name off the film but that just couldn't happen. So since Cameron wasn't allowed to see the footage, he waited till the film's producers were at Cannes and decided to break into the editing room. So we're at some minor trespassing and maybe a little breaking and entering. And he started to make his own version and everything was fine until he got caught. This pissed off the producer so much that like he recut it and reshot it. So none of what Cameron did is there. The film released and it was a flop as a 5% on Ryan Tomatoes and it didn't make like any money at all and Cameron doesn't consider this to be his debut but yeah maybe if Cameron was able to realize his vision the movie could have made a little bit of money maybe not been absolutely horrible but who knows then again the whole crew didn't speak English there's a lot that I'm leaving out there's a lot of he said she said it's hard to tell who's telling the truth and who's not so I don't know. Number four. Then there's his idea for a rated R Spider-Man. It was pretty wild. It had web bondage, curse words, and dead kids. And there's a rumor that Leonardo DiCaprio would have played Peter Parker. I actually covered it in another video, so I'm not gonna like get into it now. So yeah, you could watch that if you want. All right, number three. This one's the wild one. If you didn't know, the production of The Abyss was a mess. The reason is mainly on James Cameron. He has this unrelenting ambition his need to be the first the best it it really put him through it you know he's even gone on record to say he is the architect of this misery and if you don't know james cameron really loves the ocean he really loves the unknown he loves the ocean he loves space and he really wanted to make a film about the ocean and since you can't fake it most of the movie was actually shot underwater which made it a logistical nightmare like how do you light and shoot the ocean how do you control the temperature of the water how do you communicate underwater all these questions needed to be answered and solved immediately but no matter how much they planned more problems just kept happening which actually led to actor ed harris almost dying it was during his descent into the abyssal trench they dragged harris sideways and tilted the camera to simulate the fall however one take ironically harris's safety diver got tangled in the wires and then when harris needed air a crew member mistakenly gave him the regulator upside down remember they're like sideways so harris inhaled half air half water he began to panic luckily the cameraman pushed the guy out the way and he gave him the air properly that was the average day on the abyss the actors went through hell to make that film but no one could say james cameron was exploiting his power or say he wasn't there with them because he was one day his assistant didn't tell him how much air supply he had and he was caught off guard and swam up and then a safety diver gave him a broken regulator cameron inhaled water and the diver didn't know and he like tried to help him from stop like he thought he was panicking so he hugged him but like he wasn't helping <laughs> 
Cameron literally had to punch the diver to get away. The worst part of this, a Fox executive came that day to talk about budget cuts because they didn't understand the expensive props were actually life support equipment. And then Cameron just snapped. He grabbed the guy, he put the helmet on him and made him choke for a few seconds and said, that's what it feels like when you're running out of air and you think you're going to die. The film continued to go over budget and the constant pressure from the studio forced Cameron to release it. He wasn't finished with it, but he had to. The film released to decent reviews, but it barely broke even. However, the special edition restores all of James Cameron's vision and I actually watched it. It's pretty decent. It's a good movie. I'd say it's better than Avatar 1, but like, was is it worth all the almost dying and all the suffering? Definitely not. <laughs> like, don't get me wrong, it's a great movie. I liked it, it was cool, but like, these people went through hell. <laughs> Number 2. The PCP story is by far the wildest incident, mainly because to this day, it's kind of a mystery. So what happened? This was James Cameron in 1996. He was working on the Titanic. And obviously the Titanic is in this little movie. They have all the amenities, all the amenities are there and they had a really nice catering. The main dish that night was clam chowder or lobster or mussels, doesn't really matter. All you need to know is that everyone loved it and they were returning for seconds and thirds. Actor Bill Paxton didn't normally eat catering but he decided to that night because he was already like having a conversation with James Cameron. So he was like, why not? Horrible decision. After everyone finished eating, people went back to their normal roles however people were laughing hysterically some were crying there was just this weird sense of confusion as people just aimlessly wandered around Cameron returned to set and found nobody he said that it felt like the Twilight Zone like it's a massive production there's a lot of people just walking around Cameron assumed that they consumed a paralytic shellfish neurotoxin but this wasn't the case actor Louis Ambernathy said Cameron looked insane, one eye was red like the Terminator, and the other was as wide as it could be. Then everyone, including James Cameron, was taken to the emergency room. However, the local hospital, Dartmouth General, was not fit to handle 80 people. People at the scene described as being chaotic. People had unlimited energy, the crew members raced on wheelchairs, there was a conga line, and reportedly, a crew member stabbed James Cameron with a pen, which left him laughing and bleeding at the same time. Bill Paxton saw all of this and decided to... But I figured who, while they examine all these other hundred people, I said to Jim, I said, Jim, I'm, I'm not going to hang out here. This is bedlam. I'm going to go, I'm going to wander, because it was only a few blocks from the set. I'm going to wander back down and just drink a case of beer. <laughs> Which is what I did. And, uh, that seemed to that seemed to help me. Just drank some beer and he was fine. By sunrise, everyone felt better. No one died. The next day, a police toxicology report was requested, which found PCP in the chowder, which is a illegal drug that causes hallucinations and more. I don't know. I don't do drugs. Don't ask me. But. People were asking who did it and why, especially since it affected so many people, including a little eight-year-old girl. Well, we don't know. We never found out. However, there are some theories. Theory A, Cameron said he fired a disgruntled crew member for causing trouble with the caterers the day before. He said this idiot's plan to get back at the caterers worked because the caterers were fired after this incident. Apparently, they're causing trouble with one another. Who knows? The second theory is that Cameron was the target because of his tyrannical perfectionist attitude and you know if you look back at the abyss you could see why people could think that and actually Cameron has admitted since this incident but not only because of it he is now more relaxed and yells at people a lot less than he used to number one the number one most wild story about James Cameron is that he made his dreams real I know it's kind of corny and it's not that wild but hear me out remember when I was talking about Piranha 2 well during the production of that film Cameron was sick and he had a fever dream of a metallic skeleton crawling over the floor. This would later become the inspiration for Terminator. There's also the time he was 19 years old. He was dreaming of a bioluminescent forest. He woke up and drew what he saw. There was purple moss on the ground, trees looked like lamps, and lizard had rotating fans. It's weird, but it would later become Avatar, the highest grossing movie of all time. While it's not as exciting as him doing PCP or breaking into editing rooms, it's kind of insane how many times he bet on himself and made his dreams a career because only an idiot would bet against someone who bets on himself.
come up to me and say, you know, give me some advice for doing this. And I say, don't put limitations on yourself. Other people will do that for you. Don't do it to yourself. Don't bet against yourself. And, and take risks. Uh, and NASA has this, has this uh, phrase that they like, failure is not an option. But failure has to be an option in art and in exploration because it's a leap of faith. And no important endeavor that required innovation was done without risk. You have to be willing to take those risks. So that's the thought I would leave you with, is that in whatever you're doing, failure is an option, but fear is not. Thank you. All right, thanks for watching. Like the video, subscribe, all that good stuff. I love you. Uh, yeah, please love me, James Cameron. I don't know, I'm just talking now. Thanks for watching, bye.